Psychology as Religion, The Cult of Self-Worship by Paul C. Witz. Basically, the premise of this book is that the field of psychology in Witz's day was so often focused on the self as the supreme being that it would be better to describe psychology as a religion. He calls that religion selfism, the worship of the self. And he says that it is the overwhelming ideology of his day. When was his day? Well, Witz wrote the first book in 1977, and he came out with the second edition. This is actually the second edition, 18 years later in 1995. Now, we are 28 years off from that. And much of my audience, much of you watching, you weren't even born then. Some of this material is dated. I'm going to say it right now. It is just dated. Also, here are disclaimers. Witz criticizes psychology and selfism from a religious Christian perspective. Selfism to him is a secular humanist religion. However, as we saw in my last video, that last Rate My Cult about the Science of Identity Foundation, the critique of the self as the supreme being is not unique to Christianity. It is what happens when... It's basically what happens when the supreme deity is the self and not God. So when you have a less religious society, people are going to focus on themselves more, the individual. So many religions would agree with what Witz has to say, but you don't have to. You really don't have to. This is just a criticism. Also, psychology has benefited many, many people. Many individuals have greatly benefited from therapy. And there are different kinds of therapy. There's behavioral therapy. There's family therapy, which Witz, both of those, Witz is not even trying to talk about in his book. He is speaking only for this kind of humanist psychology that is focused on the individual, that is focused on self-exploration and self-actualization. Also, some people genuinely have trouble moving past childhood experiences that were traumatic, and they can't do this without therapy. So if therapy works, it works. Don't drop your therapist because you saw a video essay about anything, <laughs> let alone a single piece of work. Now, do I go to therapy? Absolutely not. I'm not about to let some bookworm tinker around in my head like it's a broken alarm clock. You'd have to be crazy. But if you are crazy, you should go to therapy. Right? Right? Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> but in my humble opinion, Witz has some great takes on cultural criticism and his points are relevant to social psychology today, but his advice might not work for the individual. Society and the individual are not necessarily the same, but there's an overlap. No man is an island after all. We are living in a time of what people would call therapy culture. And many of us have heard therapy speak much more than we would like, if we're going to be perfectly honest. And we've seen this toxic positivity play out over the 2010s. We've seen the rise of wellness influencers and online life coaches. So that's kind of like the psychology Vitz is talking about. It's kind of like the psychology of the collective consciousness played out in the algorithm. Now, the individual might be different. So basically, don't take everything Vitz says to heart. Just understand that it applies on a social level. Okay, enough with the disclaimers. What does Witz have to say? Now, Paul Witz criticizes the trend of putting ourselves as the center of the universe. He must really hate the modern age. <sighs> Fortunately, unfortunately, he's still alive, and I feel really bad for people, old people who have to live to see this world as it's become. And that's based on what my old head friends tell me. I'm not just making this up. Anyway, Witz is a professor emeritus of psychology at NYU right now, so I would actually like to see what he has to say about the modern age. Now, the thesis of psychology as religion is that the psychological obsession with the self leads to selfishness. It leads to narcissism. He says that this quest for self-realization is vague and will not lead to happiness. He says the idea of fulfilling one's full potential is a pipe dream and has put many on this kind of Don Quixote-like journey towards a false promise, a, a fantasy that's just, that just doesn't exist. And I'm going to say... <laughs> Dude has a point. You cannot look back from 2023 and say that this man could not read the writing on the wall. However, it's not true that we suddenly became narcissistic when this narcissistic trend started eight years ago. That's just not true. The U.S. collective consciousness has been on this trend for a few generations now. We cannot blame Gen Z. We cannot blame millennials. It's been this way since he fought this first in 1977 and before. Now, 
Vitz criticizes schools for teaching children self-esteem. What is self-esteem? It's thinking highly of yourself. Should you think highly of yourself? Well, if you deserve it, yes. The softies, then as now, they're teaching kids that we should have self-esteem for doing nothing. And that really is a recipe for disaster. It only sets them up for disappointment in the long run. We earn our self-esteem through competence. Anything else is hollow. Witz uh, cites this example of a math competition between eight countries. Now, the students with the highest self-esteem in math, the Americans, that's us, <laughs> well, they finished dead last. And the students with the lowest self-esteem in math, the Koreans, the South Koreans specifically, they came in first. So self-esteem did not affect the outcome. Their performance did. Now, current research on self-esteem is mixed. Having high self-esteem helps a person speak up in groups, but it also leads to out-group aggression. So you got away, pros and cons. Self-esteem does not seem to help school performance. High self-esteem actually seems to come from good school performance. So it's not that performance comes from self-esteem, it's actually the other way around in practice. So self-esteem comes from competence. Now, I got to give Vitz some credit for his criticism on self-esteem. Too many people have too much unsupported self-esteem. Like confidence is helpful because it will help you get back up. You think highly of yourself and you can get back up and try again. But overconfidence is dangerous. And we see this with a lot of people moving out of the house and getting their ass kicked in the real world. Now, on the flip side of that, too low self-esteem will have you stay in a bad position. So you really got to weigh this. This is just a criticism of psychology. This is not the be all and end all. Weigh it, please. Vitz also, <laughs> Vitz laughs at the idea of an inner child. Maybe as he should. I mean, you can believe you have an inner child, but I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. What if you ate paste as a kid? Now I got to watch you eat paste. Pr paste prices the way they are with all this inflation? No, thank you. Witz overall has a critique of the American individualist capitalist culture. We are told we are responsible for our own happiness. And this is why our ancestors, many of our ancestors voluntarily came to the United States. They didn't all come voluntarily. But there's a serious trade-off because happiness comes from being useful to and in loving and being loved by a community. Happiness often comes from other people. Then how are we responsible for our own happiness then? We have to rely on other people and that relying on other people is very un-American, but it's just true for many of us. And so we go searching for happiness that we can control and this desire is exploited through marketing. This trinket will bring you happiness. That object will bring you this brief manic joy. What will bring you happiness is a good relationship with your family and your friends. What will bring you happiness is your family and friends needing your special talent that only you can bring. No trinket can replace that. But according to Witz, secular humanist psychology has convinced us that we are responsible. So we buy all this nonsense from these capitalist marketers. And we believe that happiness lies just over the next consumption, the next experience, the next sexual conquest. It doesn't. That's a pipe dream. But look, Paul Witz is a Catholic and he is especially critical of the sexual revolution and sexual progressiveness. He says that the desire to please the self in sex and in relationships has led to disaster. One, you can't isolate the self in order to realize it. It's just an impossible search, like the Don Quixote thing I mentioned earlier. And two, the search for self-fulfillment breaks up family and leads to divorce. Now, Witz says that except in the most extreme circumstances, families are actually better off if the parents are together and not divorced. Like, work through your problems, he is saying. This is a really touchy subject. It's, it's really up to you to decide where you fall on it. People leave marriages looking for happiness, but happiness is elusive and it's hard to find. And I don't know the stats on the number of people who are better off after divorce versus those who would have been better off if they had stayed together. It's kind of like a sunken cost fallacy either way. So where am I gonna get those stats? Witz says that for the children, parents should stay together. Like I said, he is a Catholic. You don't have to think like him. Now, one interesting point that he made on sex that I do agree with is that teaching sex education in a matter of fact way turns our bodies into objects. Meanwhile, our minds are the subject. 
So our minds are doing the analyzing and we become divorced from our bodies. Now we hear stories all the time of young women disassociating during sex and then they have, you know, body count nonsense and whatever. But I think this disassociation from our body is especially true for us today because we are, we are these disembodied heads and we're on our phones all day. Now, Vitz argues that teaching sex in such a cut and dry way takes away from the mystique of not just sex, but of life, because life is sex. That's how babies are made. Spoiler alert, that's how babies are made. (laughs) Sex cannot be discussed without acknowledging the divine. Also, death cannot be discussed without acknowledging sex. So death at a ripe old age is the end result of successful sex by your parents. So we take the divine out of sex and we take it out of all aspects of our life. I thought this was really interesting. But this objectification of our bodies is a cope. We still fear death. And what happens after we die? We still don't know where a baby is before he's conceived. Now, some will say that the answer to both is just oblivion. But even that is awe-inspiring. Oblivion? Can we even comprehend? Can a human even comprehend a world without her in it? These are the big questions. These are the big ones. Now, Vitz says we cannot define the self. So all this work on self-actualization is is for nothing because most people don't even know what the self is. Vitz says that the closest definition people can get to is a lifestyle. And this funnels us back. This funnels us back into consumer culture. We are what we buy. But in now, in 2023, we are who we follow. Ha! Comes all the way around. Now, I think the current online collective consciousness is a good way to see selfism in action because online is impersonal. Selfism is an idea divorced from physical reality. Vitz makes the point that selfism only applies in good times with a great economy and to the youth. Poverty and illness will humble people real quick. He says that once the realities of life become overpowering, it's hard for us to accept selfism as the truth. It eventually comes face to face with reality, reality, material reality. So if selfism is the absolute truth, then it is the truth of the internet. It is real in the mental sphere. It overlaps with the idea that we are God experiencing the world. Now, this is very new age. We're going to get into it later. So if we are God, what is that? What does that do for us? God doesn't get hemorrhoids. God doesn't overdraft her accounts. God doesn't replay cringe moments from middle school. No, 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 no. So online is the only place where we can pretend to be perfect because we are these disembodied beings. Um, That's the only place where the self as supreme being even makes any sense. So we know that this idea of ourselves as God is preposterous. How are you going to pray to yourself for money if you are broke? How are you going to pray to yourself for a spouse if you are single and lonely? To think that you can give yourself these things depends on faith. And faith is the cornerstone of a religion. See? Psychology as religion. It's back in the title. Anyway. Vitz goes on to criticize the government for including secular humanism in the educational system because the government is not supposed to play favorites with religion. And yet it teaches this in the schools. And that kind of makes you think. Now, to me, there needs to be some sort of worldview taught in schools because that's the only way you can get something comprehensive. And to me, secular humanism is the least biased. However, I did appreciate his critique of sex education. I did go to a public school and we never heard anything like that. I think I would have been better off if I had like sex ed should have been half philosophy class, really. But you can only expect so much from the PE teacher who's a part time soccer coach. You know what I mean? Like, give this guy a break. He's just doing his best. I'm going to sum this up. We're not going to go into it here, but I have to mention a few ideas of Vitz's. He criticizes the self, selfism for being Gnostic. Now, we have discussed Gnosticism before. It presents itself in many ways, but is the ultimate heresy against the Orthodox or traditional Christianity. It says that the individual can interpret divine experiences without additional input, and they can do this through a a knowing an otherworldly knowing. Also, it often states that the ruler of this world, the material world is wicked, called the demiurge. But we are perfect as humans because we come from God. If it says this is not true, (laughs) it is not society doing the corrupting. He says that individuals come into this world selfish and society is meant to civilize them. 
Society makes us better people and not worse. He's got a point. He's got a point. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into that argument here, but it's an important note. Definitely read the book if you are interested in hearing more about that. There's a lot I left out of this video, including Witz's critique of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'm putting it on the screen right now, it's like a triangle. Now, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a commonly accepted idea of what the individual needs to be self-fulfilled, to be self-actualized. Witz disagrees, and whether you agree with Witz or Maslow, we do have to question why we have accepted this pyramid just because some psychologist made a pyramid meme and then made a catchy title for it. <laughs> they do this every five years or so. Now it's love languages. But who says it's not all made up bullshit? Like, who really says? Anyway, Witz, I feel, was prescient. If you read this title as uh, the cult of narcissism and not the cult of self-worship, it seems very obvious that that's what we are living through. However, Witz is only part of the truth. We discussed this on my Patreon podcast, and I will make another video in a little bit. It's a video about this book called The Aquarian Conspiracy, but this is part of it and I'll come back with the other part. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe.